How a teenager outworked a VGK defenseman and got to the front of the net in Saturday's upset loss of the Coyotes. And the Golden Knights are back on the road, this time in Canada, on this edition coming up ahead on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first choice, your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast, and please subscribe to the Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by Sleeper. Use the promo code Lockdown NHL when you go and download the Sleeper app, and you will get a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Lockdown. NHL. So, Chris, Golden Knights shut out for the third time in six games, this time by Connor Ingram and the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes. It was two to nothing on Saturday. So, who did Logan Cooley, the outstanding rookie, outwork, undress to draw the ire of Bruce Cassidy on Saturday night? Uh, Braden Pahal. Pahal lost the puck battle down low. I was, I was just watching the goal over and over during the intro and the repeat because I was just kind of curious on what else happened. So Pahal loses a puck battle down low to a teenager, as Coach Cassidy said. That became uh, the sound bites of the evening. And then after that, like you had Barbashev, he has a stick in there, and then Barbashev is behind the net while the puck goes in. Mark Stone couldn't stop the puck coming across the middle. Braden McNabb couldn't stop the puck coming across the middle. So Pahal is getting the brunt of this, but it was all five players on the ice that had a breakdown. And it's kind of fascinating because it shows you how quickly and how on points teams need to be in the NHL. Go back really fast to the Dallas game. Weird line change. Stone, I think it was Stone and um, I forgot who else, but strange line change. Puck winds up coming down, and all of a sudden, Rube Hintz is alone on the goalie. Like, it just happened so fast. So one defensive breakdown winds up overshadowing a good defensive performance. Um, Golden Knights were without, again, 33% of their defense and, again, did not have any of their regular defensive pairings together so defense did their job just one breakdown and uh that got coach cassidy going yeah he was really upset in the post game uh vgk played as you mentioned without a couple of defensemen so what is up with shay theodore and alec martinez um shay theodore was going to be evaluated prior to the road trip Obviously, that evaluation didn't come back so hot because Keaton Korzak uh, did get called up from Henderson. I think that actually, I mean, yes, that obviously doesn't paint a good picture for Theodore, but if I had to guess, Pahal probably draws out in favor of Korzak after uh, after the way that press conference went on Saturday nights. Um, Alec Martinez dated day, but Cassidy made the comments. It's probably more like seven to ten days. The way things go with this team, I will very comfortably wager, which which isn't left, it was which isn't much left, but whatever is left in my uh, sports betting accounts, that is probably over seven to ten days, and that Theodore is probably that time frame or or significantly longer, because that's just kind of the way that things go with the injuries. A lot of chances once again for VGK, another game where they say they have a lot of chances, but Connor Ingram was on, stood on his head, had a great glove in that game. You've got to give him some credit. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you always got to give the goalie credit when they, when they blank. And what was the, the shots in the game? I have the Islanders uh, Flyers game up. That's not the proper (laughs) game. Here we go. Three, two, one. Golden Knights, 34 to 18. 34 to 18. I'll say that again in case uh, people didn't hear that. So, I mean, 
what are you going to do, right? I mean, this is that spot where Cassidy talked about this. I believe it was yesterday's press conference Sunday. The comment was, are we going to get down because we're not scoring? Or are we going to get excited for the opportunities? And it's a little bit of both. I mean, if the puck's not going and the puck's not going, and I don't care if it's 50 shots, 30 shots, or 18 shots, it doesn't friggin' matter. Um, but the opportunities are there. So the team is going to get too down on themselves. You look back at some of the games, they've had their chances and they've had outbursts of scoring. Obviously you had that second period in the Flyers game. You had that second period in the Canadians game. And I mean, last I checked the Golden Knights are still on top of the West or close to it. So life is good. And Tony, I'm getting chirped left and right. So the Golden Knights fans, they're all mad right now, right? I get it. Whatever. They sucked on Saturday. They couldn't get, get a goal past a puck past Connor Ingram. It happens. It's okay. But I get I put a post up. This was more of a soothing post to remind Golden Knight fans that everything is okay. It was just a reminder for everybody out there. And then I just did the Western Conference standings and hashtag Vegas born. LA Kings fans, oh, not for much longer. And like everyone across the NHL, like fan bases everywhere. It's not going to be like this for much longer. So the point is, it's a pretty innocent tweet just meant, just made <laughs> to help the Golden Knight fans cope in this terrible time. And it's just also a reminder that other fan bases are just absolutely chopping at the bit to uh, attack, so to speak. But same breath, so are the oppositions every time the Golden Knights take the ice. And you say, don't be concerned, though, but I'm concerned, again, about goaltending. LT has lost four straight. Look at his stats. Three, Stop being concerned about the goaltending. Three, Tony, two. Knock it off. Aiden knock Hill off. in his last five. Knock it off. Well, no, you're not concerned at he's all. Not getting goal, he's not getting goal support. I think, the, I think I saw someone put out, I think Logan Thompson has had five goals of goal support in four games or something like that. So, Logan... The only numbers that so matter, he still has what you're saying is he still has a good ERA, but there's no run support. Exactly. There you go. In lang in, in, in Tony Cordasco language. Listen, Logan is a 922 save percentage. Aiden is a 932 save percentage. Money puck uh as of the weekend, and, and Aiden Hill's probably or sorry, Logan's stats probably went up. But both goalies are in the top 10 on money puck as far as expected goals given up or however the stat goes. They're doing fine. The most important things are going well for the Golden Knights right now. Pardon me. Uh, defense and goaltending. And those are two pretty important things come playoff time at last time I checked. So, yes, this is tough right now. Three shutouts, six games. Like, I get all the stats. I get it all. And... I'll be curious. I got some time today to do a side-by-side -side comparison of where things were, was this 21 games now through the season, where things are, 21 games this season, 21 games last season. And this is when the slide started. It's almost December. The Golden Knights did not have a great November, December, and had a terrible January. Call it what it is. But then February came. The veteran roster woke up and figured things out. So. That's why the concern isn't there. And, like, I mean, there's a Stanley Cup banner hanging from the Raptors at T-Mobile Arena that doesn't have any dust on it. There's no dust on it. They just hung it up a couple of months ago, not even a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago. So this isn't the time to be overly concerned. I mean, listen, if they have a bad road trip, okay, fine, whatever. But I'm not overly concerned that this is going to keep going. This team is too good. The team is too good. They'll be fine. There is no better the quote. The goaltending is fine. The goaltending is fine. Knock it off, Tony. There's no better quote in the business than Cranky Bruce. Uh, there's no better quote. He's, he's, he, he's a good he's sound bite. He's good. He's a great sound bite when he's mad. It was uh, probably more, for the better I wasn't at the game on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> more line shuffling for Brucey, though? A little bit, yeah. I mean, Carlson up on the wing again. Um, I forgot what they did with the second line, but I mean... Listen, you got to do what you got to do. Um, they're looking for that spark. They're trying to find it. And I'm really curious when the line shuffle starts from opening faceoff. Um, Pavel Dorofiev, only, I think, one goal, four assists, I want to say. And I know he was out injured when he obviously had that upper uh, upper body on the lower part of his jaw injury. There you go. Um, but things really clicked well for that third line for the 
for the Michael Amadio line. There you go, Tony. Things really clicked well for the Michael Amadio line that also features William Carlson when Dorofiev was there. So you wonder how much longer until Cassidy at least maybe considers swapping because Paul Cotter has been taking that spot. Cotter's only three and three, three goals, three assists. Um, maybe there's a little better chemistry with Dorofiev on that line, and Dorofiev has been playing a fine defensive game too. Coming up next, VGK plays on, on the road again. This time they are at, you're waiting for it, I know, Calgary. There'll be a Calgary tonight. Not long enough space between the Cal and the Gary. Okay, and a back-to-back. We'll preview that game next right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. Collective is the number one financial solution for freelancers, contractors, and self-employed entrepreneurs, and this helps you to focus on your passion, not on your paperwork. Let Collective handle all of the paperwork that you dread, like corporate formation, compliance, taxes, bookkeeping, accounting, and even payroll. The best part? It is a fraction of the cost of a CPA. Collective knows that if your business makes over $80,000 a year, you will find the most value from their services. So join the thousands of solopreneurs. I never get that straight. Solopreneurs. I like that. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Who have uh, saved an average of $10,000 plus per year on taxes with this structure. And right now, Collective is offering one month free and no onboarding fee when you go to collective.com slash lockdown NHL and you tell them lockdown NHL sent you. That's a $550 value and it's free when you go to collective.com slash lockdown nhl and tell them lockdown nhl sent you that's collective.com slash lockdown nhl and tell them lockdown nhl sent you welcome back to this monday edition of lockdown golden knights tony cardasco and chris Golick from las vegas thanks for making us your first listen each and every day and we remind you that uh, on fridays we have wtf with the friday um there's not wtf1 or wt black friday this week it's a normal friday hey, tony, i got i got our, i got our uh, t-shirt this is our lockdown official T-shirt, Beavis and Butthead. Pretty good, right? It is Beavis. I don't know which one I. You're, uh, I'm the one on the left. My hair. I think I got lighter hair. Beavis. Yeah. Which left? My hair. left or your left? Uh, my left. So you're right. Okay, you're we right. got that I'm figured wrong. out. Oh, and the Chris and Chris show every Saturday, the YouTube exclusive. You could only find on Lockdown Go the Nights on hey, our he, YouTube channel. Chris got the shut up Tony card. What do you mean? Uh, I don't know. He said something. I forgot what he said. And we were laughing. We had a funny exchange. Um, oh, I think he said the Oilers are going to win the Stanley Cup or something like that. So I like that guy. He's he exactly. That's why I, I it's funny you said that because I made the comment. I said, did Tony call you this morning? Did Tony get in your head or something? And <laughs> we had a playful exchange on the show. So the Cal pause, Gary. Is that good yeah, enough? That's okay. Good, perfect. The Calgary Flames host VGK tonight. It's uh, the first of a back to back for the Golden Knights as they are back, back to on back. The road. You say back to back? Golden Knights got back to back? Yeah. Okay. Calgary and Edmonton. And Edmonton doesn't play tonight. So everything's fine and dandy. Uh, I think it's a must win game for the Oilers. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Flames coming off of a two and two road trip. They are 8, 10, and 3. They've been flirting with that 500 mark um, overall. They come off of the road. Their big win was at Dallas. 7 to 4 was the final there. Uh, the power play special teams will be a factor in tonight's game. Uh, Cal Gary is just one for their last 29. And get this. Well, here's a very crazy stat, Chris. Uh, in the last four power plays for the Flames, they just have one shot on goal in the last four power plays, and uh, that was against the Avs in a three-to-one loss. We uh, call that not a recipe for success. Okay, so you got my attention. The Flames are 32, 31, 30, 27th overall on the power play. That's not good. Looks like the Gold Knights fell out of the top 10, too, while we're comparing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Gold Knights are down to 12 on the power play. So I think we're going to start there. That's a concern. Cassidy talked about this a little bit, I believe. And I think it was 
It was in the it was in Saturday's presser where the team is struggling five on five and the power play isn't helping right now. Well, the power play was ninth, I think, uh, Thursday or Friday. We did talk about that on the show, and now it's dropped mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, I think I'll start on the Cal Gary side, where the Flames. This is no different than what the Golden Knights just went through, guys. Golden Knights have a five game road trip. They come back home, they lay an egg. Call it what it is. They lay an egg, lay a turkey, whatever. Thanksgiving, however you want to however you want to chop that up right there flames first game back from a four game road trip this is an important thing guys this is a measurable noteworthy stat whether it's from a sports betting angle a handicapping angle or just if you're trying to figure out how a game is going to go teams do have trouble the first game back from a road trip it's a known commodity if that's the proper way to say that so The Golden Knights are going to come in with a little bit of hunger as well because obviously things haven't been going well. And they're getting a Flames team that has no issue giving up goals. I would assume Jacob Markstrom is going to get the call tonight. He's got a 901 save percentage, 293 goals against. Looking at the Flames recent games, so they go to Colorado, they lose 3-1, to but then the games prior to that. I'm just going to give you the goal totals of the games. Seven, nine, seven, six, eleven. You got seven to four games, five to four games, you know, stuff like that. So the Flames have no problem with high event hockey, but they're going to give up goals. The Golden Knights, for whatever reason, they go to Cal Gary, they lose this game four to one. Then, okay, fine, I'll stop being positive Gallic and maybe I'll wear a bag over my head for tomorrow's show. But in a game like today, if the Golden Knights don't put up a crooked number on the board that is better than, you know, two or three, then Golden Knight fans can start to have some concern. Even if they come out of this game with a, a two to one victory, that would still set off concerns. Uh, the second line for the Flames, uh, Michael Backlund, uh, Jonathan Huberdeau, Blake Coleman, uh, that has to concern you. Uh, Coleman, I feel, always plays well against VGK and Huberdeau. Uh, his line again, he's not because he's not that star that they expected to get in that big trade from Florida, uh, 13 points in 21 games. Get this already. He's a minus 12. He's a minus 12, Chris. Nazim Kadri is a minus 10. Wow. Cher Govich is a minus six. I mean, oh, this oh, their goal differential. I think I just saw was minus nine, minus 12. On the goal differential right now versus the Golden Knights, who are a plus 19. Uh, Flames are middling at home, 3 3 and 1. Golden Knights are 6 3 and 1 on the road. So, I mean, everything is shaping up for this to be, you know, I don't want to say a get right game because the Flames, as bad as they are, they're not a terrible team. I mean, we're not talking about the Sharks where they shut them out 6 to nothing or whatever that was a while back. Look at the line for tonight's game. Wow. Golden Knights are minus 118, where the Flames are basically even money, but the public loves the Golden Knights. So, you know, you got you got two from a sports betting side, right? You got two things pushing against each other. You got the first game back from the road trip, and then you have the American betting public overwhelmingly supporting. That over, I mean, 68% is strong. It's not overwhelming, but... If I was going to simply bet off of the public's lack of support for a team when the odds are somewhat close, Flames are a good betting spot. I'm not going to lie, but I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. It's a big four-point game, right? Calgary 3-1 and one against the Pacific. Yeah, that's important. I mean, listen, any division game obviously is magnified a little bit i mean i don't think the flames are going to be there at the end maybe they will i mean you never know i mean that's the thing we um me and chris actually on saturday's show talked about how the blues came from a last place in in the division to win the stanley cup and also the kings were an eight seed that's how we that's how we got to the oilers that was my positive spin for chris's uh oilers prediction i still don't agree with it but you know point being is you never know so maybe the flames will figure it out i mean or maybe though the dumpster fire continues because it seems like half the team still wants to be traded uh huberdo what a weird spot right i mean he was mm-hmm. unhappy to be traded from florida basically picks up the phone and has some very inappropriate well, it was only two words i think for the gm but it was a pretty quick conversation after that and he's definitely not the star that the flames were looking for i mean 
The Flames lost Matt Kachuk. And who else did they lose? They lost two big players. Oh, um, uh, Johnny Goudreau. Johnny uh, Goudreau. Johnny Goudreau. He went to Columbus. That's right. And then right away, I thought the GM was the hero of the day by getting Kadri and uh, Huberdo up there. But that's not necessarily the case. You know, you look at, um, it reminds me of the Moneyball movie, guys, when they're, when they're trying to uh, find a Giambi's replacement. And they keep looking for a dollar for dollar player. Instead of, you know, being a little more creative and looking at other stats like on base percentage and he gets on base, he gets on base, all that stuff. Maybe the Flames uh, screwed this up instead of trying to replace them dollar for dollar instead of maybe trying to go the money ball route. I mean, obviously, that's easy to say now. So you were at the Silver Knights game last night. Was there a <laughs> fight in that game? A fight or the line brawl. It was old school. It was great. Um, it, it started kind of innocent, right? You got some pushing after a whistle. It was a little aggressive. And Hunter Drew, a uh, prospect, obviously, in the Coyotes organization. And he just friggin' snapped. So what happened was you had an after the whistle, whatever. It, it, something happens a million times. And then they showed on the replay board he goes by and he gave uh, he gave paps he gave Papirni like a little shot and it just set everything off like it just created it wasn't like a punch or anything i think it was like a little tap on the foot but that definitely uh set up absolute mayhem and i'll i'll show a picture here because this is uh poor brendan brisson he got himself in a bad spot you should be able to see this brisson comes out of the pile what in the world not even in his uniform like he comes out. He lost his shoulder pads. There you go. He lost his shoulder pads. He lost he his jersey. Yeah, like literally, he got undressed. He got undressed. Now, it was all in the air side from us, so we didn't get a great vantage point of it. But it was definitely uh, one of those crazy moments. But if I remember, he's not a fighter, though, right? I mean, no, no, he no. was, he was, uh, he was on the ice when it happened. So you just got to jump in there and do your thing. And unfortunate for Brisson because he's not that guy. But hey. Listen, I mean, he got his hands dirty. He came out looking uh, looking good, and he got a good chuckle from the crowd. I mean, I've been to, I don't know, countless hockey games, especially over the last set, six and a half seasons now. I've never seen a player come out of the scrum missing their shoulder pads, let alone their jersey and their helmets. So that was uh, that was fun. But uh, Hunter Drew, they gave him the game. I think he got two separate two-minute penalties and a 10 because dude, would, dude just wouldn't stop. Like, he wouldn't stop. And if I got to just have a tiny criticism, the refs did a bad job controlling the whole thing as well. Like there was times where a player was arguing with like a ref in a lines and while players were fighting. And that's, you know, that's whatever. But it was, it made for some good entertaining uh, Sunday afternoon AHL hockey in front of a crowd of 3,342, I think was the number. It's a good crowd. No, I'm not sold know. out. They're still two thousand short. Yeah, three thousand short, half half full. I don't know. That's, I think the season ticket numbers went way down. I, if I had to guess, yeah. And uh, I know on the last uh, game on Saturday night uh, for the VGK that the referee they were missing a ref who was out. Right, he got uh, knocked down, and then. He was out. I think he came back. I don't know if he went Because Kazari got knocked down, definitely. He got tangled up with yeah. Stevenson, I want to say. I didn't yeah. know he left the game at all. I wasn't. But they were looking for you up there, you know, on press row to try to get you into action there. Emergency would ref. Good. I would be Emergency so scared. Ref. Oh, my God. I, no, I get would. concerned when I'm around, like, the A-League players just making sure and all that. Like, the in the NHL, the players look out for the refs a little bit more, especially on the dump-ins and, and the rim plays and stuff like that. In beer league, a lot of times there's blind clears. No one's looking, and it's every you, you're running for your life out there. Sometimes some of the guys oh. are really good about it, and no one's doing anything on purpose. It's just you know awareness. Yeah, we're going off the rails here, but why not? Hear me yeah. out. Hear me out. Oh boy, Chris Golick tossed from mini hockey. You were tossed, right? You got tossed. Come on, man. Not really. It's There's a lot to it. There's so much more to it than that. The, I, what I will say is I don't want to get too deep into this, so we're going to end this one quick, Tony. But what I will say is on the score sheet, there was no there was no official game misconduct given. So we'll leave it All right. That. Coming up next, we've got – I had to go there. Coming up next, we've got our locks of the night, our predictions for tonight's uh, game in Cal Gary. The guy – you know what? The Calgary fans got really mad at me for calling them Calgary. So 
This is oh YouTube, you got torn apart too. Yeah, this is. I can't wait for the comments. Can't wait. Can't wait. I'm I'm on your train. We're having fun. All right. We'll return with more right after this on Lockdown Golden Knights. Mark Stone scores a hat trick. Eh, maybe, perhaps VGK comes back and wins the Stanley Cup. You like that one. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play Daily Fantasy Hockey on the Sleeper app. These are all the possible scenarios for this season, but you have to get a chance to win only by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper. That's right. Uh, as the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our go-to. It's our top choice for Daily Fantasy Sports especially Daily Fantasy Hockey with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey Contest. What players do you like this week? Who would you go to for 100 times your money? Entries can be made in under a minute, and you could pick a lot of studs around the league, like McCarr, like Eichel, not Jonathan Huberto, um, McDavid, of course, all of those players. All you need to do, more or less, is to pick uh, the stats for these stars uh, choose stats like assists, like goals, saves, plus minus, and much, much more. You heard us, VGK fans, 100 times payouts on Sleeper. So start paying attention, get your picks right so you can win big. Use the promo code Lockdown NHL and you will get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Lockdown NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Welcome back, Locked On Golden Knights, for this Monday edition. Tony Crudasco and Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. And we appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. Thank you so much. And please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. Big Chris, I am really surprised I still have a voice left. <laughs> I mean, it's been the out of the last six days, I've broadcast five times, five yeah. days. And uh, nine games at that dollar loan center, right? Over four days. Are your that feet was, are your feet like frostbitten? Are they blue, or do you still have I them? Did you get me amputated? I wore I wore the double socks. Nice. I wore the double socks tomorrow, as you said. You'll be wearing the bag, so double bag it, double bag it. Okay. Uh, we got little Chris with us now. Little Chris, it's time for locks of the night and your predictions for tonight's game. All right, little Chris, Chris come back to us here, man. Stay in there. Stay close to everybody. Stay close. Stay with us. Stay with us. Okay, there right, we Chris, go. What do you got, buddy? <laughs> Stay close over here. Stay close over here. When he goes, mm, that's that's trouble. He's only had a half hour to think about this. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Run the clock. Five, three flames. Five, three flames. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's he like? Whoa, whoa. He says five, three flames. And give me two players, buddy. Chris, look at the camera. Uh, Amadio and Stone. Amadio and Stone. Okay. All right. He heard that hat trick line that I threw in there. What do you okay. got, Tony? What do you got? What do you got? I'm going to go. I'm going to follow Chris's lead and go 5 3 Flames. And I'm going to go Wa and Colasar. Wow. Has Colasar scored yet this season? No. Has he scored Colasar hasn't no. scored yet. And, you know, I've been on the mindset. I've been on the train. He does so much for the team, but at some points, you got to put one in. It has yep. to happen. Yeah. And honestly, like if if they wanted to find a way to force Dorofia on into the line, Paul Cotter would be a very reasonable replacement on Colasar's on the fourth line. It would be a different wing, but wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I said about three weeks ago. Don't you think maybe they should start thinking, looking at scratching Colasar? You said no way. We're keeping that no. I'm with you, Tony. I'm 100 with okay. you. But okay. let me rephrase that. I was not with you three weeks ago because the team was winning. Things were going right. well, right? And now the team isn't winning. The team things aren't going as well. Dorofiev has a chemistry on that third line. Paul Cotter, I don't think, has done anything to warrant being taken out of the lineup. Um, it would just depend how Cotter adjusts to the other wing or if Carey could adjust to the other side. That's maybe some for down the road. Um, tonight, I'm with the Amadio train as well. I like Amadio. I like March. So this is a big spot where March is so, I think, takes. I mean, all the players, no one likes to lose, but March is so wears it a little bit differently, especially when things aren't going well. So I think March is so could have a big game. Amadio still doing things right, always around it. And 10 points, 21 games now. So 
Amadio very quietly is starting to get that. I think we talked about this last week, that unsung hero uh, hat is starting to make his way to uh, Michael Amadio. Um, I'm going 4-1 Vegas. The goaltending is going to be there. They got to find a way to three or four goals, right? Got to find a way to three or four goals. If they win three to one, cool. If they win two to one, uh, if this game goes to overtime or a shootout, either way, yes, it hopefully could be two points, but it's a concern if they only can put up two or less goals against the Flames and a goalie who barely is over 900 for a save percentage. So tonight we'll see Aiden Hill and then LT yes. tomorrow. Yes. And two, I, um, two thirds of the starts on this short roadie will be for Aiden Hill, right? Uh, that's pretty safe to assume. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we appreciate everyone tuning in, especially our everydayers. Thank you so much uh, for being with us each and every day. And don't forget WTF with the Friday coming up this week as we get into the holiday spirit. I guess there's Christmas lights up throughout the neighborhood. You have yours up. Your trees up. Your everything is up. up. We everything. Been, it's up. been up for a week, dude. We are. We already. Are, we're going out like doing our drives already as a family, looking at Christmas lights and nice. stuff and all that. There's this one house I think I talked about about last year. This town in our name. This time in our neighborhood. Uh, our, our side, but close by. They have like a huge digital screen up. They got like this tree. Everything is choreographed, and it's it's so cool. Well, we so appreciate cool. everyone tuning in. And don't forget the Chris and Chris show on Saturdays, the YouTube exclusive. Please subscribe there. Lockdown Golden Knights. From a man, Chris Garlic, I'm Tony Cardasco. And maybe I'll even hear you tomorrow through these headphones. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you so tomorrow lucky. right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. Take care.